Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to the beautiful town of Bamberg in northern Bavaria once again. And of course if you've watched my channel before you will know that I really have a love of the Bamberg Rauch beers. And I was in Glasgow the other day and discovered that Schlenkerla have a new one. So this is the Fasten beer which is actually the Lent beer. And it's only been brewed for the last two or three years I gather and it's the very first time I've seen it so I really thought I had to review it but it's meant to be quite different from the other ones because in addition to the traditional sort of Schlenkerla Rauch malts, it does have some regular quite bready malt in it too. So it should be a very, very nice beer for us to review. But as always with my Bamberg reviews, I want to dedicate this to my very good friends, Daniel and Johanna Waldhoff. And I've been out to Bamberg and stayed with them. And Daniel's a very good and very old friend of mine from university. And he really got me started on beer with the Schlenkerla beer. So this review is for Daniel and Johanna. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I will take you through a very very brief history of the brewery. It will only be two or three minutes, but if you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. The brewery website's available for you below, both in English and in German, and there's also a link down there that will take you to all my other Schlenkeler reviews. And at this point, I do actually have one or two more of their beers to review for you, so do stay tuned for that. But anyway, as I told you, the Schlenkerle brewery is located in the historic town of Bamberg in Germany, which is just to the northwest of Nuremberg. Now, Bamberg's really cool because it went largely untouched during the Second World War and it actually has a lot of wineries and monasteries and things that you can go around and visit and the Brauhaus is right in the centre of the old town and it's very famous even within Bamberg and Franconia and throughout wider Germany as well so one of the real, this is probably one of the most famous breweries in the world in fact and this region of Germany to the, at the northern part of Bavaria the Franconia region has a ridiculous density of breweries. You're talking about 300 breweries in a fairly small area, so the highest density of breweries in the world. So if you're a beer lover, get over there and check it out. But the Brauhaus is in Dominikanestrasse in the city, and it was actually neighboured by the Dominican monastery. And the history of the tavern started with the formation of this Dominican monastery in the 14th century. And the first mention of the brewery was actually in the year 1405. But the Brauhaus building was apparently sold a number of times between 1405 and 1605. 15. And during the Thirty Years' War, which was 1618 to 1648, the building was destroyed and rebuilt. And the brewery itself was actually founded in 1678. But before this year, the reports are scarce, but there is far more documentation after this. So they think there may have been some brewing activity before this, but the official start date for uh, Schlenkerla and Brauerei Heller really is 1678. However, since 1678, there's been numerous owners of the Schlenkerla brewery, and one of the very important owners was Johann Wolf Wolfgang Heller, who took over this brewery in the mid-18th century. Now, he owned an old rock cellar for beer storage up on the Kalberg Hill, just outside of Bamberg, and this storage facility was later moved to the St Stefansberg Hill, which is actually inside of the city limits today. But over the course of the 19th and 20th centuries, the the brewery was mostly it was uh, moved gradually to this location just above the ancient cellars of Steffensberg. But in 1877, Andreas Grasser became the new owner of the brewery, and he had a slight physical handicap where his arms moved in an odd way as he walked. And the old Franconian dialect for this was called Schlenkern. And after this, people began to refer to the brewery as Schlenkerla, despite the uh, the official name of the brewery being Hellebroy. So in 1907, Andreas's son Michael took over the running of the brewery, and by this time more and more people were visiting the brewery, and they actually um, leased a part of the former monastery from the Bavarian government, who had become the owners during the course of secularisation, just to sort of allow their customers to have a very nice uh, environment to come and drink the beer in. But in the 1920s, the buildings in Dom Dominikanestrasse, uh, the chapel of the Dominican monastery, for example, these were restored by the Germanic Museum of Nuremberg in the 1920s, and in the 1960s, the restored part of the tavern was bought from the government and the company and Michael Grasser's daughter Elizabeth and her husband Jacob Trum took over the running of the brewery at this point too. So in 1967 they passed the brewery down to their son German Trum. So it's quite cool that it stayed in the, the Trum family for quite a number of years actually and the, the the other family as well. But over the years they've modernised the brewing facilities and they've opened up new rooms within the Brauhaus and they've also added a beer garden in what was the former yard of the monastery. But in recent years the facade of the Brauhaus has been modernised and it's uh, it's got the famous historic ceiling paintings in there as well. They've restored all of those. And I can say from personal experience that the Schlenkerla Brauhaus is really beautiful. It's very typically German and it's got a lot of the local Franconian food so it really is worth going and seeing. And as I say, one of the most famous 
breweries in Germany and indeed the wider world these days as well. So anyway, that's your kind of brief history of Brauhaus Schlenkerla. It really is worth going to see. To list the other beers you can get from these guys, um, they have a few quite special ones here. So in the regular range you've got the Merzen and all of them have similar labels incidentally. Usually they've just got a different coloured trim on them. So you get the Merzen which has the brown trim, you have the Urbach which either has a red or a gold trim on it. I think it's, it's more gold now. The red one was the old one. They have the Weizen which is a green one and then for their Christmas beer they have the Doppelbock and they do have a Lager beer which is a Munich Helles style beer but it has some kind of smoky tint to it as well so it is very nice and that has a kind of um, light blue label rather than the yellow one so do check all those beers out and as I say you do have this one as a special beer for the Lenten beer as well so let's actually get on to the part of the video about this beer specifically so this one is a 5.5% smoked beer or Rauch beer as you would call it and apparently this beer differs from the other Schlenkerla beers in that it's produced with a mixture of light malts i.e. non-smoked malts and the classic Schlenkerla Rauch malts and this beer uses Spalt hops which are from near Nuremberg and also the famous Hallertau hops from southern Bavaria and this beer undergoes a week of primary fermentation before aging two months in the ancient cellars below Bamberg and they actually say on the back of it they say that this beer is your afternoon snack or brotzeit it includes this they, that's one of their slogans that they use so it says, it says on the back exactly, Lent beer has the brot site already included, which is the German word for the afternoon snack. So yeah, it's brewed in accordance with the Bavarian purity law of 1516, which has later become known as the Reinheitsgebot all throughout Germany. So yeah, it looks a very, very nice beer. So you can see Andreas, I think Andreas Heller on the bottle cap of this one, who had the, the Schlenk way of walking, and you can see him on this little part of the thing down here. I'll just bring up the camera and make sure that you're actually seeing that quite nicely. But I really like the sort of classic German way that they present these beers. This one actually has Cervi I'm not sure if that's maybe Portuguese or it's, I don't think it's Spanish I really don't know but it's the first one I've seen that has a different language printed on the label and you can see on the top this with the MMXV the Roman numerals for 2015 so it is this year's special one and you can see Bamberg Spe Spezialität as well and that is the bottle cap there so without further ado let's get this guy open and we will get on with the tasting here this one sounds very very nice so as you can see, it is a very nice smoky opening. I think I said Johannes Heller there, but I think it was uh, Grass, Johannes Grasser um, who was actually the one with the schlenk. Apologies about that little confusion, but that sometimes happens when you do these beer videos. But as you can see, it's pouring a very, very nice, but you do get a good whiff of that typical smoky note that you expect from this beer. A big head on it, so I'll just let it settle down for the moment. But as you can see, I'll just bring up the light and let you see the exact colour of this beer. It's poured a nice dark sort of uh, mahogany, slightly rosewoody colour. It, is, it would be transparent if it was a little bit lighter. You can kind of see through the bottom of the glass there, but it's just the darkness of it means you can't see through it. But it looks very, very nice. There's a lot of little bubbles of carbonation just going up towards the bottom of the head. You can see it just right in here. It's about a three finger of a slightly kind of creamy coloured head I would say on this one but it looks very very nice actually. Some bigger bubbles just sticking towards the bottom of the glass too and you can get a little bit of sedimentation just at the bottom there too so very very nice looking beer. So let's have a look at the aroma of this one. So as you would expect you've got that typical sort of Schlenkerla meaty aroma to this one but a nice kind of smoky malt as you would expect. It's actually quite meaty and quite peaty at the same time. It has that kind of peaty sweetness to it actually. But you've got a nice little bit of an oaky note in there. It's quite subtle. A little bit of vanilla maybe and some maybe some nuts but you can pick up a little bit of caramel on there and you can really smell if you know the smell of these beers you can really pick up the um, the difference between this and the other ones. There's a lot of lighter bready notes in this one, so really do pay attention to this aroma if you do actually get a chance to um, try this beer for yourself. There's just a little bit more sediment coming out of the bottle there, but it looks a very, very nice beer and it does smell nice too. And another thing that's different about this one actually is that you can pick up just a sort of little bit of the uh, this kind of grassy and noble hops there. Maybe that's just the spalt hop coming out a little bit more but it smells very very nice. That noble hop character and the slightly bigger breadiness is what makes this aroma different from the other ones but it smells very very nice so without further ado let's get stuck into this. This is the uh, Echtschlenker La Fastenbier from Brauerei Heller in Bamberg, Bavaria, Germany. Prost!
yeah, it really is. It really is quite different from the other ones. It's nowhere near as kind of thick and viscous, if that makes sense. It's actually a lot lighter, this, so it's, it's, it's a good bit lighter than the other Schlenkerla beers. It's beautifully done, though, as you would expect. So, yeah, it has that typical nice big malty smokiness that you would come to expect from the Bamberg Rauf beers. That kind of goes in a sort of Y shape across the tonne. It just goes around the edges of the palate there. But you've got this blanket of quite a, a fairly prominent bready character. Of course, it is kind of masked. The flavour of it is quite masked in with the, uh, the sort of smoky characteristics of the beer. But you can really, if you know these beers, you can really pick up the difference with the bigger bready malts in there. It's, it's beautifully done, this. It's really cool when you see a style that you really love. Probably my favourite style of beer, in fact. It's really cool when you see them do a new variant of it and show you how they can actually change the flavours of the beer. But yeah, you've got that typical beautiful um, Schlenkerla smokiness, sort of meaty smokiness in this. It is quite sort of, I see a lot of people describe this as barbecue, but it really isn't. It's more of a kind of um, dark, kind of toasted, smoky character you get. It's a kind of peaty meat flavour that you're getting, actually. Almost as if you kind of smoke your meat. It's like that, rather than being a barbecue feel. I don't know why people describe it as being barbecue, because to me, barbecue is a little bit sweeter, if that makes sense. It's more of a kind of saucy flavour, but this is really, really nicely done. But yeah. With this one, you've got a bit more prominent uh, malt base in this, if that makes sense. You've got a little bit of the typical woody and nutty flavours that you would come to expect of this beer. And there is a little bit of caramel. You can feel that if, as you move into the aftertaste. The, the tongue gets just a little bit more wet, and you get a little bit of the kind of caramel flavour in it. And that goes right down the middle of the tongue there. But as you move from that centre point of the tongue out towards the sides, that's when you're getting just a little bit more of the kind of smoky and uh, and sort of peaty character coming out of this beer. It is, it's really is beautiful. But one thing I'm noticing around the edges of the palate in particular is that you have this more prominent um, hoppy character in comparison with the other ones. It's a real noble hop character so it's quite a it's a, just a light, sort of grassy touch around this. It's not sharp with citrus or aromaticity or anything. It's just a nice, smooth, grassy character that goes right around the edge of the tongue. And what makes you notice it is that you'll feel the slightly drier character of this beer in comparison to the other ones. So just pay attention to these grassy flavours. And they go all the way around the edge of the palate. It's a sort of uniform hoppiness, which is quite interesting. But yeah. It's absolutely beautifully done. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, it's definitely mid-bodied. It's a good bit lighter than the other ones, I think. It feels a lot less viscous, but it's got a nice smooth carbonation in it. But as you would expect, it's a nice big malty beer, a really beautiful smokiness in this. And it feels, at the same time, while it's lighter because of the hoppiness, you can pick up the bigger feel that the bread gives you in the middle of the palate too. So do pay attention to that. That's what really distinguishes this beer from the uh, from the other bam from the other ones in the Schlenkerla range. You can pick up just that nice kind of more lighter bready addition that you get from that unsmoked malt in this. But there's a good bit of hoppy character in this one as well. You get just this little bit of hoppy dryness, particularly around the edge of the tongue. And I didn't notice it so much when I tried the other ones. I've tried the Lager beer, the uh, the Eiche the Merzen and I've also had the Weizen as well and you don't notice it so much with the other ones but this is probably the most hoppy one that I've tried from them so far but overall it's a really really beautiful beer from one of the best breweries in the world in my opinion probably my favourite brewery in fact I would go as far as saying that so it really is worth trying and if you've not tried any of the Schlenkerla stuff really do do give it a go if you see particularly this one is very nice and it's quite different but also the Eiche and the Urbok would probably be my two picks of beer to get from this brewery. But anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, please let me know in the comments section if you do happen to have tried this beer before. Always interesting to read your comments. I really, really recommend that you try this beer. But in the meantime, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know if you've tried it and I will catch you soon with my next beer review. And I do have a few more from Bamberg and from Schlenkerla to do for you. So prost until then.